Okay, here is a beautiful 2-5-1 lick from Bobby Broom. Bobby Broom is such an incredible player. He's got such a great sense of phrasing, a great feel, and he always has a really tasteful note choice. And I think this line is a perfect example of that. So he's playing this over a tune by Thelonious Monk titled Reflections. And this is actually from a great uh, Thelonious Monk tribute album that Bobby Broom put out. If you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend it. I will include a link for it in the description. And we're doing this over a 2-5-1 to A-flat major. So we start with this beautiful um, slur, starting with our pinky on A-flat on the fourth string, and we slur all the way down to F. So pinky on A-flat, ring on G, middle finger on G-flat, pointer on F. So intervallically against the B-flat minor 7 chord, we are slurring from the flatted 7th chromatically down to the 5th. Really pretty. And then we do D flat and C. So intervallically, like I said, the slur from the flat seven to the fifth, and then the flatted third and the ninth. And the ninth is such a beautiful note to land on to um, you know conclude that little phrase. So nice. Now this next part gets really interesting the way that he goes into the five chord. So he goes. I love that. So we have these two pickup notes before we go into the E flat seven. We play F and A flat, which is the fifth and the flatted seventh of the B flat minor chord. So. All right, now the next note is the start of the E flat seven chord. Now, one of the things that's so cool about this, and this is a common thing in jazz vocab, um, if you're familiar with guide tones, right, normally we're taught that like the thirds and sevenths are kind of like the starting point for a lot of um, ways to maneuver around jazz harmony. So you take the seventh of the minor chord, or the two chord, right? So in this case, A flat is the seventh of B flat minor, and then you go down a half step, and that gives you the third of the uh, five chord, in this case, E flat seven. So, you know, we're all used to hearing, right? That's just such a common sound in jazz harmony. But one of the things that's cool that you can also do is rather than go down a half step from A flat to G, you can go up a half step and then you, it gives you more of an altered sound because then instead of landing on the third of the dominant chord, you actually are landing on the flat five or sharp 11, but depending on uh, which uh, tonality you're referring to. Um, and that's what he does right here, right? He goes. And I love that sound. That Every time I hear somebody do something like that, it always catches my ear. I love the sound of that flat five against the dominant seven chord. Um, and you can, like I said, you can take any of these guide tone ideas that you're familiar with. And just rather than going down, it has to go up. Right, such a great sound. So when he does that, we have our pinky on um, A, and we, he does altered from this point on. Such a great set of, uh, what is it, four, yeah, four notes. So we do A, B, A, G, F sharp. And that's straight E flat altered, right? He's doing the um, uh, sharp 11, flat 13, sharp 11, third, sharp nine. All right, so. And I think when I'm going in from the A flat to the A, I guess I'm sliding my pinky. All right, so up to there we have. So beautiful. And then over the one chord, we resolve to A flat major. He does this beautiful, like, triplety arpeggio sort of thing. We go. So it, we start with our ring finger on C. We go C, B flat, G, E flat, C. So right there, that's just a straight C minor 7 arpeggio. Right, so some of you might know this already, but when you're playing over a major chord, you can start on the third and play a minor seven arpeggio. That gives you kind of like a major nine sound. So that's what he does right there. And then he does F, C, E flat. So, so all just very pretty um, notes over the major chord, right? We have that C minor seven arpeggio, which gives us the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth, right? That major nine sound that we were talking about, and then, and then he adds the sixth. So just a perfect line, in my opinion. Um, so the entire thing is. So beautiful. So uh, a lot of great things to be learned. It's, it's a quick lick, but there's so much great info just in this little short uh, passage. So like I said, we have that. 
um, thing where we are going from the two chord to the five chord, and rather than going from the flatted seventh to the third of the dominant chord, we go from the flatted seventh up a half step to the sharp uh, 11 of the dominant seven chord, which is such a great sound. Uh, and then also, you know, that pretty slur from the flatted seventh down to the fifth of the minor chord, and then the great uh, arpeggio, the C minor se uh, seven arpeggio over the A flat major chord with the six, the three, and the five at the end. So, so much great info in this. And like I said, Bobby Broom is such an incredible guitar player. Uh, so that's our lick for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. And as always, if you would like to donate and support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash Music or paypal.me slash Music. That's our episode for this week. Thank you for watching and I will see you at the next episode. Take care.